Hey guys, this is John Humbert with the 8 News Now I team. We were a part of the crew that went up to Carpenter Canyon on the west side of Mount Charleston to take a look at a major, major drug bust. As you can see, we got real, real serious problems. The rain and this big terrain. So the rain hasn't made anything easier, but neither of these big rocks. This is at least a 30 to 45 percent grade that we're trying to go over. It's really tough to think that they had to haul gear all the way to the top of this bluff. There was no real overacting with that. There were some very, very, very steep areas. And finally, when we got to the top of that bluff, we came right into the grow. There were about 20 different officers here pulling these big stalks out of the ground, some of them as much as six feet tall in the ground. They started putting them into piles. But as you can see, they also had these huge cutters as well, some hand cutters, big almost pipe cutters right there as well, dealing with fences. This was amazing, grueling work all morning long. Being ready to harvest. Oh, they're real close. They're real close. Real close. It's looking. These are really good plants. This water. They have to get them out of here because this water's going to mold them up. So we're pretty good, close to getting done. Two. Yeah, I mean this isn't your your average what they would call ditch weed. This is actually smells like the stuff that comes out of the grow house. This is a uh, sense It's all female plants. You can tell because the these little brown things, those are the uh, pistols and it comes out looking for male plants to fertilize it. But when it doesn't, it comes out and creates more um, THC content. So that's kind of, this is what they're looking for. They, that's why they start out with seedlings so they can weed out all the male plants. So yeah, this is all pretty high. Now the agents had to get very low to the ground and cut out these very close to the bottom of the root. The root structure actually goes very deep down into the ground. So they wanted to make sure that there were no seeding or budding that could happen again. This is a great shot where you can see just a small section of this huge grow, a massive amount of pot here. And then this hose goes to the pit. And then the basically the main drip line of the hose goes all the way up that canyon. They're tapped into a spring way up there. And so you did come across suspects whenever you guys got here, right? Team two did. Okay. Team two did. These guys did. Yeah. And they were detained or? No, they're up the they, mountain. They, we, well, we had to get chasing to, them since we got here. Yeah, we had to have the heli the helicopter can't fly in this. Just safety. We got our guys coming down, and the helicopter went back. So. So many of these plants were pretty much mature and ready to go. The agents wanted to spend a little more time to get it right. Sorry. And so what they'll do is they'll sit up underneath these, they'll sit up underneath these tents and, and trim trim all this uh, trim all of the all the leaves off, basically. And then what they do is once they dry it, they'll cut it. Probably not any in here. Yeah, and then they'll package them, package them in bags like this right here. Okay, those just like sandwich bags? No, those are actually oven turkey bags. Oh, okay. How long does it take for them to dry on average? Does it just depend on the size? Uh, it depends on how they do it. Uh, it depends if they have propane set up. If they have a propane set up, what they'll normally do is you kind of look around here that I'm looking. They'll, they'll normally take a tarp like that to me looks like a setup for a process and what they'll do is they'll run a tarp over it like this and enclose it and then t and basically get some kind of heating source okay. to heat and dry out the plants so but yeah these are these were these were on the way but I mean like I said they're still still drying so did you guys go to the water pitch yet no no I'll try up here. So basically what they'll do is they'll main front since the water goes way up the canyon, right? They'll gravity they'll gravity feed that out of the spring into these drip holes. 
and then what they'll do is they'll they'll basically they'll put these filters in let me jump over here and show you this filter system that they got so then what they'll do is they'll they'll get these filled up and they'll come back with a can or mesh and they'll put it in the hole so none of this debris clogs up the lines to you know stop water to go into the plants so it's typical you'll see these filter systems a lot in these holes and then this has already been cut but again obviously these plants right here in this climate they're probably needing a gallon to probably a gallon and a half a day and so obviously this is the turn on off switch and once there's a gravity valve uh, then, then that's all they do so and then there's one more of these pits up near where they're sleeping at if you guys want to walk up around this trail okay. I'll take you up and show you where that's at so this came down from the main source and so And that's what's supplying to fill up the two pits. And that's just natural pressure. That's natural pressure coming from the spring. He basically went up and up and around there, up where those upper clouds are at. That's where he was last spotted at. And our guys were about 40 yards away from him. But with uh, the weather getting the way it was, we called the helicopter back. Or helicopter told us weather conditions were too bad so we got the helicopter down and then I, that's whenever I called our guys off and, and said we need to come back down for safety reasons. I'm sorry, the first part. Just the helicopter it got too it it was really helicopter socked in yeah. yeah it was they were up where those clouds are at okay. but that's kind of where that guy was at he had basically ran from here down up the drainages he got okay. up into those clouds and, and basically like I said it was too socked in that's when we were getting a downpour on us and again it's not safe for the helicopter and I mean literally all my guys are in really good shape too but I mean, for a guy to, and they would watch him. They'd watch him sit down, take about a two or three minute rest while our guys were coming, and get up and he'd run again. So you got, but, but again, too, look at the safety aspect of it. You know, I mean, I mean, it's so wet out here. We got our guys up there, rocky, slipping and falling, and then all of a sudden now we got a search and rescue for those guys. And and we don't want to then put search and rescue in jeopardy of bringing their ships up, trying to rescue one of our guys, when technically we can just call this off and be safe about the whole thing, because that's what I want is to safely take down one of these grows and effectively without getting anybody injured. Yeah. So. And make it more difficult for them next time. Yeah, yeah. So. And the apprehension is just sort of icing. I'm sorry? The apprehension is just sort of icing on the cake. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. I mean, yeah, I mean, everyone, want, you know, you want to at least try to put a body with this because, right. because I mean, you look at all the, not only, not only is it the, the, the dollar amount of drugs, not only the drugs, uh, and then but the environmental damage as well, too. I mean, that's that's again, you know, you look at all this stuff up here I mean, this is a huge environmental impact mm -hmm. and so uh, That's what we look at but then again There's a, a lot of a lot of drugs up here as well, too that haven't even been taken off the mountain right up here is where the two sleeping quarters are at Oh, okay. So walk right up here Filtration system And again, this is where we saw some nine millimeter ammo. We, we didn't find a gun though. They probably took it with them, huh? Probably, probably ditched it along the way somewhere, absolutely. Were any weapons found and seized? Uh, at the kitchen, there's a little, uh, little uh, what would you call it? Like a little 22 cal pellet? Maybe the new guy gets this butt. Yeah, yeah, like I said, I don't know hey, if it's nice or whether this is, this is, this is their combination. You've been able to hear those thick thumps in the audio. That's some heavy rain. It came and it went. At parts, it was very, very wet and really difficult for anybody to do anything up on the mountain. 40, 50 yards, he'd go like this at us, yeah. and then he'd go like this at us. He really did? Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, get Bob Lee, you know, saying everything in the book. That had to a few times I thought he was, I don't know if you screwed with or thought about giving up, and he'd this rain's been going sporadically throughout the afternoon and also throughout the entirety of the morning. The problem is now these 50 to 75 pound bundles are now going to have to go back down the hill almost a mile in this very slick, muddy terrain. 
You ain't doing what? Just start rolling it up towards me. Just go over the top. Yeah. Marco! Keep pushing. Oh, what are you trying keep to do? Keep rolling again? Yeah. Just keep rolling it towards me. Yeah. Got it. A big part of what the folks had to deal with are all these pieces of brush, all of this stuff getting in the way. Eventually what we had was a small path going down. Getting up was a huge challenge by itself. Getting down a little bit easier if you didn't have to carry one of these bundles. So everyone had to kind of maneuver and get around, jump over piles of other wood and dead brush. It was just amazing how wide each of these bundles became. And you really had to make sure that every single leaf and every single bud came back down the mountain. These guys really, really did their homework. This is a great shot as well of just how muddy it became. Everyone's taking the same path, so you get this dark, thick mud mixing with the rain, and you almost do a controlled fall as you come down. This is a great shot, too, where you can see the height and the depth and just how sheer that climb and, as we said, the controlled fall was. But you're jumping over logs, you're coming down, and from far away, you can kind of almost feel that it's like a Sherpa coming down from Tibet carrying these big piles of pot. You got all these things hanging off the side. You've got to maneuver in very small positions. But this, at the end of the day, is the harvest at its uh, purest form. This is definitely not what the pot growers wanted to see. But for the cops, the DEA, and all the other folks, this is pure perfection.